Hi everyone. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad you guys are here today. My fourth and fifth graders. I've missed you guys so much. I didn't want to leave you guys out. So I'm going to make a quickie little video. My videos are going to have to start being a little bit shorter just because my internet is awful here at home. But I just wanted to show you my studio. I showed this to my second and third graders, but I thought I might give you a little detailed tour. This is where I make all of my artwork. I absolutely love this little desk. I like things being small and working in small spaces and not having a lot of supplies. And it just makes me kind of focus a little bit more, not being overwhelmed by too many art supplies. But I've got my little storage unit here with toilet paper rolls holding all of my paints. I'll show you. I'll grab one of these and just slip it in their little designated compartments. Specialty paints like some real high dollar paints go in here. And then I love having my swatches of color. These are like my favorite colors to put in a painting. Then I've got all my color pencils in here. These are like my favorite colored color pencils. And then I put, whenever I sharpen pencils, I put all the shavings in there. And then these are my hallowed Copic and Windsor and Newton brush tip markers. I love those. And then oh, I've got some Neocolor crayons. These are really cool. These are not like your typical Crayola crayons. They, when you put them on the paper, and color it all in and you uh, apply water to it it's really cool it turns into watercolor so I may have to show you that too but that's my top shelf kind of all my supplies go there and then I've got all my brushes my sketchbooks and art journals then the water the paint palette just use a plain old paper plate and then this is my art journal I'm gonna be painting in soon and then here this is where I keep all my my watercolor palette. I decided to give it a new home. And I just pop it in there. I'll show you. Hang on one second. So that is my watercolor. That's what it looks like when you pop it open. And that's the tray, another tray that I you can pop right back in there on those little circles. It's a perfect little travel box for the watercolors. And I use some of that to work on my character that we're going to talk about here in a minute. And then this thing I made out of polymer clay and molded it and formed it into a plate and then fired it in my oven and got it all hard and it's now like a plate. So it's perfect for watercolors and I made all these little cups that we can mix colors in and I tested it out a little bit here and it works out great. I love it. So I may use that when I'm working on our piece here today. And then I also might show you, this is glass. This is what I use to put oil paints on. Now I'm gonna show you guys a little bit more in depth of our character cards that we're working on. But next week, I think what I might do is show you guys how I do oil paintings and let you watch me do that. So um, that'll be the next video. So I wanted to show you, since we're talking about palettes, where we put the paint. This is the surface that we put the paint on. With oil paint, you have to use glass so that it doesn't absorb into the product. And then let's say if I use oil paint on this paper plate, it would just absorb right through because the oil paint is obviously made of oils. So the oil will just sip right through and soak up and eat up this plate. So you just use acrylics here because acrylics are just water-based. They're not fill, full with oils. So that's a little rundown of the palettes. You can kind of see there how I use all of them. I like using a lot of different kinds of medias. So yeah, just wanted to show you quickie my little studio. And then I'm going to prop you up on this little thing. You ready? I'm going to bring you around here. And then I'm going to get you propped up. Let's see how this works. You sit right on top. Right there. Ready to go. Ha <laughs> ha. Thought that was kind of cool. All right. Well, let's get to work. Let me show you what we're doing today. All righty. So I've got all my stuff laid out here. And I wanted to show you just a little bit of some supplies that I popped out here too. 
When I paint, I use a ton of stuff. I love using all different kinds of mediums instead of just one. And when I say mediums, that means it's different kinds of art supplies, basically. That would be considered a medium. So these are all the kind of mediums I like to use, is the ink filled brush pen. This probably would be considered a tool since it's a brush marker, but it's filled with water. I don't know if you could see that bubble or not, but it's filled with water and that helps a lot when I'm traveling and using my watercolor palette and it works really, really well. So I may use some of that, but then I'm also going to use brushes. I've got brushes of all different kinds of sizes here and these brushes are what you call round brushes. They are round or considered round because the top of it has a round shape to it. Now, let's say for instance, this one, this is what you call an angle brush because it has an angle to it, it has a chiseled edge to it. That's what you call an angle brush. And it's also considered kind of flat too because it's a flat angle brush. Now some other ones might be, um, that's an angle brush too. This is a flat brush just complete flat. It's not angled. It's completely flat at the top and it's a flat brush. I use this to add like a big area or cover wide areas of paint with this kind of brush. So that comes in handy. And then you've also got these big old brushes. <laughs> Look how big that is compared to those tiny ones. I'll use this when I'm painting on big canvases and I need to cover a lot of ground. And I could show you that too. And then, let's see, what else do we have? I have more, oh, there's a different one. Now this one's called a filbert brush. This one, it's kind of a mixture of a flat angle and round brush, but it's flat, it's a flat brush, and it is kind of angled at some points on both sides, and it's also kind of round, so, but it, overall it's what you call a filbert brush. And we normally, in class, we use the round brushes or the flat brushes. Those are kind of what we use. But as you advance in your art classes, you'll probably get to use more of those. But for now, let's just use round brushes. So I've got all these little buggers. I've got some that are big and some that are really tiny. And I'm going to use all of these to get started because I want us to keep working on our character cards. I haven't touched this one yet, so let's do some work on this really quick. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to paint this tree purple. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get a water brush here and I'm gonna grab a purple. Actually, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna get a bigger brush, one of my biggest brushes, and just grab some water, grab some purple, and I want to test out my new watercolor palette. Let's see how well that works. Now this is really, really red. This has a lot of red undertones. I know it's purple, but it doesn't have a lot of blue in it. It's more like a red violet. And I want it to be a little bit more red violet, I mean a blue violet, almost like a gray, but a hint of purple in it. So I'm going to start off with the purple. I think that's a good amount there. And then I'm going to clean my brush. And then I think I'm going to grab a little bit of black just to dull it down. When you want to dull down a color and not be so vibrant, can add black to it. And it helps calm it down a little bit. And then I'm going to add some of this blue, just a smidge. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. But I want it to be a little bit more bluish. So I'm going to add a little bit more blue. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. Right there. See how I changed that red violet to kind of a blue violet? It's almost like a gray color. It works perfectly. So I used a big brush to mix it on the palette. Now I'm going to use my water brush 
and squeeze the brush a little bit and I'll drip out some water. Yep, see, there goes the water and I'm watering it down. When you add water to watercolor, it makes it brighter and it tints up the color, meaning that it doesn't get too dark. It becomes brighter in value. And that's what I wanted. I wanted like a gray color. So when I say purple, I don't mean like purple. I mean like a grayish purple. That's kind of what I'm going for. So I'm coloring in this tree, giving it some life. And then you can see some of the green is kind of popping into that purple. I kind of like that. That looks cool. I didn't mean for that to happen, but it happened and I'm glad it did. I'm just going to paint this all in here. And then I thought I might talk to you. Please, please, please keep thinking about those character cards we were talking about. Let's uh, maybe you've got a lot of time to explore online, maybe uh, to research some characters that you would like to create. Um, if you wanted to look at someone, look at, uh, I know some of you wanted to look at some reference photos to create your character and you've got the perfect time to do that, to look up said person and maybe pull some ideas from that person and make your character anything you want. And remember how we practiced drawing the person, drawing the face? This would be a perfect time for you to do that as well to practice drawing the face. I thought also what I might do is I might share with you that one more time. Since your sketchbooks are at school, you can't really refer back to what you practiced in class. I thought we might, I might share with you how to draw a face again. We could do that real quick. But yeah, so there, uh, that was kind of like a little lesson in watercolor painting and I've got that tree all done. Now I think what I might do is let that dry a little bit and then I'll come back in and add some more details. Now what I think I might do here is show you how to do a face because next time um, I will show you how we're going to transfer. We're going to, I'm going to finish coloring in and adding details to the picture and then I'm going to show you how we can transfer the top half to the bottom half and flip it. I'm gonna have to get some tracing paper and do that and I'll show you how to do that. So really quick to finish off this video, last little bit, when you get pencils, if you see these like 3B, 2B, 4B, 5B, 6B, sometimes I've seen 9B. This is the softness of the lid. So 5B is really, really soft. Now when I say soft, it doesn't mean like the lead will you know, uh, bend and be really, really soft. What I mean is the thickness of the lead uh, would be really, really thick. How about that? And the, some of the pencils, let me see if I can find another one. Like this pencil, this is, it's Disney princesses. I love my Disney princesses. But this pencil is probably a 2B. This is the pencil that you use in school. You see how kind of thin and not so thick? It's not as creamy, it's almost kind of scratchy. Well, with this pencil, this 5B, it's really creamy and it's darker and it just flows a lot better when you're drawing. I see even if I bear down with the 2B, it's still kind of a lighter gray. It's a different texture. And this one I can get really, really dark if I wanted to, because it's thicker. It's a lot more denser lead, so you can get more darkness out of it. It's really cool. So this is probably your 2B, and this one is a 5B. So the higher the number, the creamier and the thicker the lead is, or softer the lead is. Okay, so there's another pencil lesson now. But... What I'm going to do now, sharpen my pencil, I had to sharpen it to really quick. I'm going to do the same thing we did in class. You can follow along with me if you want to. 
make a little square. You can just grab a little piece of paper. Anywhere you want, pencil, marker, crayon, it just doesn't matter. Let's practice drawing that face again, okay? So remember the oval is like this. It's like an egg. Now remember, if some of you, let me get my eraser, hang on. So I said this video wasn't going to be very long. I lied, I can never make two short videos. I hate making short videos. I feel like I'm cheating, you guys. So this video may be long and it may take a while to get to you, but it's a coming. <laughs> so your oval doesn't have to be that long. It could be rather short and stubby. Well, not short and stubby. That sounds bad. It could be a little bit shorter. It doesn't have to be long. It could be shorter. It could be any way you want. I actually changed my mind. I wanted to make it a little bit shorter because I felt like I was making it too long in class. You can always erase. If you are one that likes to erase, I would not recommend using a marker or crayon or anything like that. Probably use a pencil. But remember, we divide the face in half. Oh, that's probably too low. Let me bring that up just a little bit. We divide the face in half, just like this. And then you know, just like this. So I did dividing line all the way down the middle of the face just like that and don't make it too dark I kind of made it too dark and then, let's see if I have a, oh I do have a kneaded eraser let me show you a kneaded eraser these things are so cool this is like play-doh that never dries I've had this thing in my drawer for I don't know how long it's just like it's always gooey and you can play with it and plot and pull it apart and it's really cool for when you have maybe too dark a lines and you want to erase it but not erase it you can just press down on it maybe twist it a little and it makes the lines a little bit darker I mean a uh, lighter see so it doesn't erase it completely you could still see it but it just doesn't make it too dark so it's nice now when I was talking about the eyes there needs to be an eye in the middle of this half of the face. And then there needs to be an eye on this half of the face. Just like that. Remember, we've got eyeballs in our in our head, a ball in our head. And then you want to draw the eyelids around the ball as if it's a round 3D object. And you want to do the same thing on the other side. Same thing on the other side. One looks a little bit bigger than the other. I'm going to make this line a little bit darker up here. Make it look like she's wearing some eyeliner or something. Yeah, girls, you guys can put makeup on your person if you want to. It's totally up to you. I'm kind of making it a bit darker. Now, you know how sometimes in our eyes we have like that little dip right there at the bridge of our nose? It makes like a little... Yoop. I always like to make those as well. But you form your eyes just like that. And if you really look at your face, your eyes are not exactly the same on the other side. They're not technically symmetrical. If they look like sisters, it's okay. They don't have to look like twins. And then sometimes I like to shade a little bit up here for the eyelid. Just a little bit of shading. And then maybe some eyelashes if I wanted to. Now, when you make eyelashes, don't. Maybe try not to go straight up like this. Think of eyelashes. They're like little wisps. Just like that. See, I can get really deep into details now. Now that I'm not wrangling a whole class. I can get a little bit more in detail. So there's some eyelashes. Now for the eyes, you just want to make a little circle that goes, that doesn't fill up the whole thing. You want it to look like it's being covered by part of the eyelid. So don't make a full circle. Make like a half a circle. And then you make the pupils. Pupils kind of start at the top. And they start at the top. 
and there are your eyes. And you can draw eyebrows. Give them a bit of a shape. Some eyebrows. Eyebrows. Remember, they don't look like twins. They're like sisters. If you want to make really thick eyebrows, you can. If you want to make a unibrow, you can do that, just like I said in class. <laughs> you can do that if you want to. And then for the nose, just want to make a small little smiley. And then make the nostrils. All holes that just go off to the side. Kind of all blends together. Some nostrils are a little bit higher. And that's good. And then for the lips, for the side of the nose, it can go like this. Now, if you have a different way of doing your nose, you do it any way you want. It doesn't have to be like this. But this is kind of how I typically do it. And I don't draw a line for the nose. I never draw a line like that. It looks too unnatural. So what, if you want to, if you want to go a little advanced here, instead of drawing a straight line, make like a shadow, like the edge of the nose. And it looks a little bit more natural. So you're just shading. And remember, it goes all the way up to your eyebrow. And it fills in right there. Make those lines, those definite sharp lines, disappear. And fade it out. Just like that. Because there's never a sharp line. It's just shading that makes it look like there's a sharp line. That's all. Then you're going to make the top of the lips another little smiley face. Tiny little smiley. And then you're going to make... The sides, kind of like a mountain range. There's the peak, and then there's another peak. That's part of the mountain. And then you can give it a little bit of a smile if you want to. It's up to you. Then you're going to make another little lip. That's the little part right there on your top lip. And connect it. Okay. And then draw the lower lip. Easy peasy. Now, for guys, if you want to make them a little bit smaller, it's up to you. I always tend to draw women. That's just what I do. But after you do the lips, draw the neck. Draw the neck. And then the ears are always right beside the eyes. You can fill them in, make little lines on them to look like ears. I always never really worry about ears. See, I didn't even draw ears on her. Sometimes I just cover it up with hair. It's up to you. And she's got a really round face. So let's clean it up a little bit. I'm going to make it side sweat bang. And then one right here kind of goes around. Now you can use your eraser to get rid of the top half of the head and the lines if you want to. So if your character has short hair, draw short hair. If your character has long hair, draw long hair. Anything you want. Be thinking about how you want it to be. I'm going to add some more hair. I love drawing hair. I just think it's fun. Because you can get really creative. I'll make it kind of short. It goes behind her. And then, of course, her shoulders. Now, guys, I only want you to worry about just her head. Don't worry about the body. Just go down to the shoulders or the guy's shoulders, girl's shoulders, anything you want. Just worry about that. Don't worry about the body. Just do the head, neck, and shoulders, okay? Make it easy on yourself. I don't want you to get too overwhelmed. Think about how the hair moves around your head. Look at yourself in the mirror. Look at how your hair moves. What does it do? Does it fly away, have like little flyaways that stick out sometimes? Does it have really pretty curls? 
or handsome curls. What you got? Have fun with the hair. I think I might actually add her a little bit more. Okay. So just experiment, have fun. Pull out your sketchbook, pull out a piece of paper, pull out a marker, anything. It just doesn't matter. Just do a simple little sketch practicing your character, okay? And start off at the top, draw something around them, like objects, like for a basketball player, you can do a basketball. For a unicorn princess, you can draw the girl with a unicorn horn on her. It just, it just doesn't matter. Use your imagination, have fun. So build that up, and if you want, it's up to you. Ask your parents, or if you're allowed to, it's completely up to you. I'll have my email link down below and you can email me your progress and maybe share some thoughts with me if you want to about your character. Or if you have any questions, please ask me. I can't, apparently I can't get comments um, uh, available for you down below this video and uh, I can't fix that. So I don't, I really hate that. But if you have any questions or comments or anything you want to say or tell me or anything, just email me and I'll be glad to respond back to you. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope maybe you've gotten inspired to want to keep working with your character. If not, it's fine. If you just want to draw people, it just doesn't matter. So yeah, next week what I'll do is I'll show you my progress and how I've transferred things. And then we might also work um, in my oil painting too.